Greetings, everyone. My name is William, and today I'll be discussing chapter 22 of our textbook, which talks about social networking sites, or SNS. You know, from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram uh, to Snapchat to LinkedIn to WhatsApp, it's hard to imagine our current life without those systems being a part of it. Um, social networking and social media uh, has become an intricate and evasive part of our everyday life. Um, we use it for our own social interests, uh, to connect with family, uh, to promote business, um, to just simply communicate and to sell merchandise. Um, social media has become uh, such an evasive part of each one of our lives worldwide uh, over the past few years. Um, if you just think back about 10, 15 years ago, uh, social media wasn't that big of a deal, but now you can barely walk down the street without seeing someone uh, searching through an application or uh, searching on their laptop uh, and being connected to a social media app. Now, there's three criteria uh, that must be considered in order to be an SNS or social networking site. Uh, number one, it must construct a public or a semi-public profile, meaning it must uh, display a person or a business or, or some entity. It must promote some uh, particular individual or group or corporation in order to be considered a social networking site. Number two, it must articulate a list of other users uh, with whom to share a connection. So that's what makes it social, um, that it has a list of people who that individual or that site or that business can be connected to. And the third thing is that um, you must be able to view a traverse list of connections. So um, as an individual, you can see who other individuals are connected to, and that's what builds a network. And so when you create your own profile and you're able to uh, view other profiles and connect to other profiles, that's what makes it social. And then when you're able to see the connections that your connections are connected to, that's what creates the network. And that's why it is called a social networking system. Now, over the years, um, it has become so diverse um, and, and almost such a unique part of our lives that we sometimes intertwine and, and confuse social networking systems with social media. But those two are not one and the same. It's almost like saying uh, the internet and the World Wide Web is the same thing. And when you start to think about that, they're very closely connected, but they're not actually the same thing. You can be on the World Wide Web by accessing the internet. But because you're not on the because you're on the internet doesn't mean you're on the World Wide Web. Well, the same thing goes for social media and social networking systems. I can be on a social networking system, but not be using social media. But when I'm using social media, I am in fact using a social networking system. So what are the differences? So social media is described as an electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other content. That social media is all about sharing and creating a community. Now, a social networking site is defined as uh, dedicated to creation and, maintain and maintenance of personal and business relationships. Um, do you see the difference there? One is uh, based around community and sharing, and the other is based on creation and maintenance of relationships. So they are closely corrected, are connected, but not one and the same. So let's talk about the background really quick of social networking. And so if you look at the slideshow that I provided to you, you'll see a timeline there. And you'll see that early in 1969, uh, there is a corporation called CompuServe uh, that was started by Jeff Wilkins. And the reason why it was started was it was to help streamline 
uh, his father's insurance company. Um, and, and the way he did it was he had a computer system because computers was a few and far between at the time. Not everyone had them. So he had a computer that he used as a timeshare. And what that means is you could use the computer at CompuServe in order to store your business's data on there and use their storage space and, and, and you could access that that way. And then in 1977, when computers, the computer business started to boom and when pe more people started getting computers into their homes, uh, Wilkins kind of got another idea. He saw that the timeshare was really doing a great job so he start, He decided to continue that um, by creating an app to connect the home computers uh, to the main computer at his office. And so you could control it. Uh, you can store your information and access it remotely. Now in the 1980s and the 1990s, um, there was the system called BBS or bulletin board systems. And what that did was that provided uh, convergence points for people to meet and to share online. It wasn't quite as advanced as the way we see social networking today, uh, but it was the start of it. It was the start of people actually connecting with other people. And then in 1996, this, this company called SixDegrees.com came into fruition. And that's when you started to see the social networking uh, uh, sites start to take a turn. Um, it was the first identifiable social networking site as we compare it to uh, what we know now as a social networking site. Um, then you move all the way to 2002, and some of you will remember this. Uh, there's a social networking site called Friendster uh, that was created by a former Netscape engineer named Jonathan uh, at Abrams. Um, and then later on down the line in 2003, we see MySpace emerge. And what MySpace did was MySpace allowed people to uh, create profiles and customize those profiles using HTML. See, in 2002 with Friendster, you were able to connect with people and to create profiles and to uh, send messages and, and updates and, and those sorts of things but you weren't able to uh, customize your profile the way that MySpace uh, did. And so we move on to 2004, and that's when you see Mark Zuckerberg come into play. And Mark Zuckerberg created what we know today as Facebook. And Facebook uh, really started connecting people. It started off with just college students, and it began to grow over the course of the years when people were able to update statuses and, and see other people's activity. And so the social networking system, the, the so, social media portion of that became really interactive and really uh, social by definition. Move on to 2006 and uh, Twitter was formed. And Twitter really wanted to uh, take the social networking, uh, the social media aspect from all the social media sites that had been created and give it an easier format in which to be connected. And so you had a 150 uh, character box where you could send messages out to friends and to uh, those that you were connected to. Um, 2010, Instagram came into play. Instagram really was simply uh, a site where you could just show pictures and, and connect with your friends through uh, pictures that you share. And it helped to, uh, for you to share your experiences with others. And then in 2011, um, Snapchat came on the scene. Now, those are just some of the examples of the really um, popular social media sites uh, that emerged along as we see social networking systems and social media uh, begin to take a foothold in our society. Uh, but it is not a comprehensive list. 
I'm pretty sure many of you can go on and on and place many more uh, markers on that timeline, Pinterest, WhatsApp, and all these other uh, sites that have emerged throughout the years and that will continue to emerge. So while we're on that aspect of social media, let's talk about some of the recent developments in social media. Um, there is a quote from our book that says, social media is a mirror of the internet as a whole. An organic, seemingly living, breathing thing that is at times unpredictable and volatile. So one thing you must remember about social media is that it will always change as society changes. And that's what makes it unpredictable. But because it's social, it will continue to evolve. Um, and so some of the interesting uh, uh, things uh, that have emerged is um, an interesting form of social media uh, has come on the scene and it's called live streaming. If you look at Facebook, if you look at uh, Instagram, if you look at Snapchat, well, I don't think Snapchat has it yet, but um, a lot of social media sites have recently moved into live streaming meaning you can record uh, yourself in real time and your friends can see real time video footage of you. And that is the new thing on the block that uh, has emerged through social media. Another uh, thing that, is, that has emerged is uh, cross-platform messaging. Um, that's one of the new developments in social media. And what cross-platform messaging is, is kind of a spin or a different approach to text messaging and sending uh, text. Uh, you can send video messages and, 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 and uh, GIFs and picture messages now through this cross-platform messaging. Um, if you need an example of that, there are examples such as WhatsApp, which has become uh, a huge popular uh, new application that people use in the realm of social media. Another development now is that businesses are using social media teams and, and uh, setting up positions for social media in the workplace. Uh, not only that, they're using social media to communicate, um, to advertise, and also to handle their customer service. Um, there's certain apps now that you can send direct messages through certain companies through their app, their social media app, and you'll get a response within a certain period of time. So businesses are beginning to understand that this social media thing is not going away. And in fact, it is only going to infiltrate our lives more and more. And so they're jumping on the bandwagon. Now, as we're talking about developments, uh, one of the negative developments that we've seen develop from social media, um, simply because uh, with it being unpredictable and volatile, as the textbook says, um, it's hard to determine uh, the psychological and sociological uh, effects from it being such a huge part of our lives. But one of the negative things that we've seen is cyberbullying. And uh, it's become one of the developments that have occurred, that have occurred uh, from social media. But on the flip side of that, we've seen many campaigns and trainings and, and, and uh, groups that have taken on the task of cyberbullying via social media. So what is the current status of social media and social networking? Well, if you look at your, uh, your slideshow on slide number 10, you'll see a chart a chart that talks about the percentage of all American adults and internet using adults who use at least one social networking site. And you'll see that from 2005 all the way throughout the years, those numbers continue to increase. Now about 76% of all adults and adult internet users use at least one social media site. That is a large portion of our society and of our population throughout the world. 
Um, if you look at the next chart, it talks about uh, an American statistic. Among all American adults, the percentage who use such uh, social networking sites by age. Now, just as, just as you probably imagine, um, when this came out, uh, the largest percentage of social media users fell into the range of about 18 to 29. Right behind them, 30 to, to 49, and then 50 to 64, and 65 and older. And although those generation uh, generational differences exist, what you'll notice uh, as being similar uh, in all those different categories is that none of them are declining. They are all steadily increasing as time progresses. progresses. So in each age group, you'll see that people are using social media more and more. So what is the percentage of social media um, people that use social media and social networks worldwide? Well, if you look at the next chart, it'll give you the answer to that. Um, you'll see that from 2010 and then all the way up to a projected number in two, uh, 2021, the, the population of worldwide social network users are projected to do nothing but increase. Um, as of now, in 2018, uh, they predict that 2.62 um, million or billion people are using social networking sites. That is almost two thirds of our society, of our worldwide population. And so as you look uh, on your chart, you'll see that by the year 2020, um, the number will be even higher. And so as I've been saying throughout this presentation, it seems that social media isn't going anywhere. So since it's not going anywhere, there's some factors that we need to watch. Um, one is that mobile technologies are taking over the internet and they're taking over social media. And what that means is uh, you're seeing it already. Everyone is walking around with a smartphone. Everyone's walking around with a tablet. Everyone's walking around with a mobile device. And so since mobile devices and tablets are on the increase and in things such as laptops and uh, PCUs are on a decline, that means the social networking system has to move now to a new platform. And that platform is becoming uh, more and more uh, mobile apps. And so many people are using mobile apps and it's taking over the internet and social media game. Uh, virtual, virtual reality is the next big thing. Um, virtual reality such as uh, the Oculus Rift uh, is becoming the next big thing in social media. As a matter of fact, uh, Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg, just bought out Oculus Rift. And so if our social media tycoon is now buying out the virtual reality um, technology called Oculus Rift, you should rest assured that something big is coming in our future. Uh, the next thing you need to watch out for is uh, that large and small businesses are beginning to embrace social media. If you open up any social media app, any social media website, you'll see that um, businesses are advertising and selling their products and services. And so they're understanding that there's a new arena of the way that uh, people communicate and people share and people uh, view things. And that new realm is social media. And so in order for businesses to stay ahead of the marketing game, um, they're getting heavily involved in social media. And what does that mean for all of us? Um, it means that social media plays a part in getting a job. And so uh, one thing we see that when it comes to getting a job today, um, even in 2018, one of the big things that'll help you is pr proficiency in all forms of social media. Um, we just talked about how businesses are heavily saturating social media into their uh, corporations, their firms, and their companies. And so proficiency in not just one form, but all forms of social media 
will help you to stand out in the job market. Um, the next thing you need to know about getting a job is that when you know the industry, not just a part of it, but the history of it, um, it causes you to stand out uh, in the job market. And the third thing is um, just be proficient in photo programs. Uh, like the old adage says, there's an app for everything. And when people want to make a social media presence, when businesses want to make a social media presence, um, they need photos to stand out, that pop out, that uh, stops the scroll, so to speak, so that people pay attention to their site. So being proficient in uh, photo programs uh, helps when it comes to getting a job in social media. So let's talk about projecting the future. And I'm going to end this not with uh, by telling you what the future holds, but by asking you a question. And that question is, uh, where will social media be in the next 15 years?